British photographer Mark Neville has been documenting the daily lives of Ukrainians for years now. He lives in Kyiv, and through his photos, he hoped to raise awareness of the trauma that ordinary citizens faced while the threat of a Russian invasion loomed. But as the buildup of Russian troops escalated, Neville hurried the publication of his book. And four days before the invasion, his photo book, Stop Tanks with Books, hit the shelves, and Neville sent copies to hundreds of world leaders, politicians, even celebrities, who he believed had the potential to stop a war from happening in Ukraine. Mark Neville is joining us now from Kyiv. Um, Mark, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing these images with us. They're, they're amazing pictures, and I wonder what your hope was for people seeing these photos. Well, thank you for having me. My real desire was to try and get people in the West to recognize a version of themselves in these pictures of Ukrainians, because Ukrainians have been maligned for so long now by the Kremlin. All these kind of uh, ridiculous myths about Ukrainians have come out uh, over the past eight years, like uh, Ukraine is a fascist anti-Semitic state. Well, that's nonsense. I mean, complete nonsense. We have a, you know, a Jewish prime minister here, for God's sake, a Jewish president. So. You know, all these myths have come out, and my aim with the book was to try and get these world leaders, these politicians, these diplomats, these celebrities, to connect with the emotion of these people. And in doing so, kind of um, weaponize the form of the photo book to try and get people to support Ukraine more. So I don't think it's enough just to sit back and watch uh, the, the, the genocide of the Ukrainian people. I think we really need to step up and we need to introduce a no-fly zone over Ukraine, and we need to do it now. So really, it was about trying to use the, the power of, of art, of culture, to connect with people. Because I really believe that it's, it's, it's culture, it's art that changes society, that changes um, our views about the conflict. It's a poem about World War I. It's a pop song, song about Vietnam. These are the things that change people's um, perceptions. And I think the images of just daily life, right? We saw them there. We saw people swimming. They're just enjoying a day in the sun. We saw people on the farm with their goats. These are the moments of daily life. This beautiful scene with these uh, small children, a woman smoking a cigarette near a playground. These are the scenes that aren't happening right now. Well, that's right. And what I'm showing in the book, which was made over the past four or five years, and which, as you said, went to print just before war started, we rushed to get the book out to this target audience of 750 uh, political heavyweights and celebrities who we thought could change public policy, uh, governmental policy in the, in, the, in the West, and support Ukraine more. So we urged, even in the original draft of the book a year ago, we were urging for a fast track for Ukraine to EU membership, to NATO membership, really tough sanctions against Russia, all the things that seem very prophetic and normal now, we were asking for years ago. And the thing is, this war's been going on for eight years now. And this is what really angers me and upsets me, is that the West has done pretty much nothing in that time to, to help Ukraine. It, the support has been very intermittent. But I remember making a project in 2017 about the 2.5 million people who had already been displaced because of the war in eastern Ukraine. 2.5 million already. And um, I tell you, I talked, to more, I talked to hundreds of Ukrainian families then, and not once, not once did any of them ask me for anything. They didn't ask me for money. They didn't ask for help relocating. The only thing they wanted to do was sit me down, make me a cup of tea, and tell me their, their story. And that is exceptional. Yeah. These people really taught me something. They really taught me something. Incredible kindness, bravery, and generosity. And I tell you what, if the situation was reversed and America needed help or Britain needed help or Germany needed help and Ukrainians were able to give it, they wouldn't hesitate. They would step up immediately. So they're not asking. They're not asking for us to do anything that they wouldn't do themselves. The book is beautiful, Mark. You know, one of the things that I will say, I want to thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Vladimir Putin tries to say there is no Ukrainian national identity. Well, you captured it. It is there all over these pages. Mark Neville, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.